What's up? It's me, the Chief Courage Crusader, Courage Molina. I'm your confidence coach and favorite Bible teacher, and I am bringing you the midweek motivation, okay? All right, so this week's midweek motivation comes from Jeremiah 32, verse 17. I'm going to read it in the NIV. Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. The title for today is It's Gonna Happen. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. When I went to college, um, by the time I got ready to go to college, I was... Listen, I, let me just say this. I wasn't the first to go to college, but when I went to college, I didn't know anyone personally that had graduated from college, okay? I didn't know them personally. It was like winning the lottery. I knew people won. I didn't know anybody that had actually won personally. And so when it came to my last semester, I was so nervous all the time. I was like, bruh. Is something going to go wrong? Am I going to forget something? Am I going to do a graduation check? And then it doesn't happen. And I had worked so hard. And I thought, oh, I don't know if this is going to happen. I was just so scared. But in 2005, guess what? I graduated from Florida State University. And it was like, okay, finally I did it. But let me tell you, that last semester felt like, dang, I don't really know if this is going to work. Because I have been working towards it since 1999. I graduated from high school in 1999. And I took a long route. <laughs> I took the scenic view. I started at one school, left that school, went to another, left that school, and then finally transferred to Florida State before graduating but because it took such a long time and I didn't take a direct route, I just wasn't sure that it was going to happen for me. I just, I knew I was putting in the work, but I just, I wasn't sure if it was going to happen. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like, man, I've been doing this work. I've been showing up. It hasn't been an easy road. Maybe you've taken the scenic route too. And so now you're in a situation where you're like, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to happen. I don't know if this is going to work out. I feel like that's probably how Jeremiah felt. Jeremiah was a prophet, and his message was not one that was warm and fuzzy. His message was really one about, like, he was confronting sin, and he would confront sin wherever, whatever God told him to say, he would say, and the people were not very responsive. And because they didn't respond well to him, he also kind of wondered, like, Dang, am I even doing this? Am I like, am I good at this? Was I really called for this? Is because I'm not seeing the results. People aren't responding the way I think. And I know what God is saying he's gonna do. God, so the children of Israel, they had been acting up. And so he had given them into the hands of their enemy. And Jeremiah was telling them, hey, listen, y'all need to repent and return because if not, y'all are gonna be given into the, they ain't listen, they ain't listen, okay? So it was like God was saying he was going to restore his people and he was going to bring them back to Jerusalem, but it didn't look like it was going to happen. It didn't look like the people were going to turn their hearts back to God. Some of them even threatened him. Some of them wanted to kill him. I'm just, you know, don't kill the messenger. They wanted to shoot the messenger. And so I know he had to be very discouraged in that, right? So this is, that's the season that he was in. And then God tells him to buy a plot of land. Now, this is during a time where I am... All these children, all these people out here in these streets, they acting crazy. They're not behaving right. You're also telling me that you're going to give them into the hands of their enemy and then you're going to later restore. Like you're telling me all this stuff, but you want me to buy this land. It doesn't really seem like this is the right economy to be purchasing land, Lord. And then the land that he told him to purchase was land that was already under siege. Wait, what? Yes, the Lord told... So this were, these were already difficult times right you could you could categorize it or describe it as it was a difficult time in judah it was a difficult time and you could also say that it didn't seem like a great investment because the land was under siege so you want me to buy land that's under siege but jeremiah did it and he did that as an act of faith 
But when he did that act of faith because he trusted that God was going to do what he said he was going to do, that he was going to restore the children of Israel, that he was going to bring them back to Jerusalem, because he trusted God, he did that. It didn't change the fact that he still had a little bit of doubt. That's where this Bible verse comes in. Because after he purchased the land, he started praying. He needed to encourage himself. He needed to remind himself, oh, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. He was reminding himself of who God is. God has made the heavens and the earth. That means that there is nothing that he can't do. He has created everything, everything I see, the land, the sea, the mountains, the sun in the sky. This God who has called me to do this thing, who was promising me this outcome, who was telling me he's going to do something uh, miraculous in my life. He is the God who said, let there be light. He is reminding himself in this prayer. He's just not talking to God. He's reminding himself. He goes on to talk about, you know, it was hard for Moses. It was hard for David. The thing that they had to do wasn't easy, God, but guess what? They did it. David was anointed king and then sent back out to take care of sheep, right? Moses was called by the burning bush. And when he went to go ask Pharaoh to let his people go, things got worse before they got better. He is, he is remembering and reminding himself of who God is and how God has moved in his life and in the community before now. So this is him encouraging himself. And I wonder what God is calling you to do in this season. I wonder what God is calling you to do in a season where things are crazy. Is he calling you to invest in your business, invest in yourself, in your marriage, in your kids, in your health, in the growing of your ministry, in your own growth? What is God asking you to invest in right now? Because buying a plot of land is an investment and he asked him to do that at a time where things didn't look good. Guess what? When I look around, seems like we're in a time where things don't look good. Doesn't look like this would be the right time to invest invest in your business. Doesn't look like this might be the right time to invest in your marriage because things are bad and they have been getting worse. And you've tried for some time, but things still aren't getting better. You're not really sure if it's time for you to launch a business in this season. Why? Because we got coronavirus and things are being shut down. You're not sure if it's time for you to invest in your growth. Is it time for you to go back to school right now or should you just hold on to all the things that you have? Let me tell you this. It is time for you to do whatever God has told you to do. Because when we step out on faith. He stepped out. He purchased the land. He didn't just sit back and say, oh, I trust God. He responded, but he responded to what God said through obedience. And when he did that thing, even though it didn't look good, guess what? God turned that thing around. Where is your trust? Put your trust in the Lord. And I promise you, it is gonna happen. It is gonna happen for you when you put your trust in God and you're not sitting around allowing circumstances and situations, your mindset, your feelings, what somebody else said, what you heard, what the statistics say, what the data says. You're not worried about what those things are saying because you are trusting in God. It is going to happen. You know what's going to happen in 2020? I know we've seen a lot of death and destruction. I know we've seen a lot of hate and a lot of racism, but do you know what I'm declaring and decreeing in 2020? And I can say these things because I know the God who said he would free us. You understand what I'm saying to you? I know that in 2020, while coronavirus is going on and anything else that comes this way to for the remainder of the year, no matter what happens, I know this. I know what's going to happen. I know that marriages will be restored during this pandemic. I know that faith will be renewed in this pandemic. I know that finances will be replenished in this pandemic. I know that bodies will be healed. Minds will be healed. Businesses will be expanding. Ministries will be expanding. God will be expanding somebody's territory. I know that people's income is going to increase. I know that you're going to be blessed. I know the work of your hands is going to be blessed in this season. Why? Because God God, oh, sovereign God who created the heavens and the earth. And there isn't anything too hard for God. It doesn't matter what the death toll is. It doesn't matter what the sickness is. It doesn't matter how far it reaches. It is reaching across the ends of the earth and it's got us shook. 
out here in these Christian streets. It's got us shook, but guess what? What we have to start doing is reminding ourselves of who is still in control and understanding that his power is not limited by Corona. He won't be stopped, that he's the type of God that is committed to his people and he is invested. How do we know that he's committed and invested? Because there came a time when he was willing to throw rocks on our behalf. There was a time when he parted the Red Sea and drowned enemies at the bottom of the ocean because he invested and he sacrificed his son Jesus on the cross because Jesus was willing to do the cross, lay down his life. He is committed and invested in seeing his word come to pass. And because his power is limitless, there isn't anything that God can't do. So whatever promise God made you, guess what? It's going to happen. It's going to happen. All you need to do is show up and do the thing that God is calling you to do. You don't need to be everything to everybody. You ain't got to do it like other people. It doesn't matter how people are responding. It doesn't matter what people are saying. All that matters is that there is a God in heaven who has called you to do something and he ain't slowed down. He ain't stopped and he ain't shook by no coronavirus. We're the only ones that were surprised about what was going down but I'm telling you this don't allow what people are saying and what people are thinking to determine how you will respond in this season you better listen to what God is telling you to do and get in the word of God and trust him put your trust in God not in the system not in politics not in your vote not in banking not in the medical field you better put your trust in the only place that is undefeated the only place that has an unblemished record the undefeated chance champion of all things, the beginning and the end. Who is that? That is God. That's where you're going to have to put your trust. That's where you're going to have to put your belief system. Those are the things that you have to remember. This is not the time for us to be looking at situations and circumstances and saying, OMG, I can't do what God has called me to do because the statistics are telling me something else. This ain't a good time to start a business. This ain't a good time to start investing. No, I'm going to do what thus says the Lord because my trust is in him. I'm going to trust that it's going to happen because I know who God is. In the meantime, let's follow Jeremiah. Let's pray. Remember who God is and what he has done. You want to get to know him better? I'm going to end this the way I always do. I want to encourage you to join the Courage Circle. This ain't about coaching. This is about having an intimate relationship with the one who has called you, the one who has anointed you and appointed you for this work. How can we do the thing that God has called us to do if we are not walking with him? How can I be in the mind of Christ and not be in the word of Christ? How can my relationship with him grow closer? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The closest relationship that I can, I cannot have the closest possible intimate relationship with God if I'm not in the word. Yes, I love prayer. I love worship. I love church and I love a good sermon. But I'm going to tell you this. There comes a time in your walk where you got to get tired of being spoon fed by somebody else. I love love my pastor. Shout out to Pastor Stephen Furtick Elevation. When I tell you he's a master chef of the word, I mean that and I appreciate that, but I can't get all my meals prepared by him. Some of that good word, that word that's mm -mm good, I need to get in that word and get intimate with the Lord for myself. I need to be able to open up the book of God, the word of God and hear him speak to me and speak to my situation and speak to my circumstance to me. That doesn't happen if I'm not spending time in the word. And so I want to encourage you and invite you to join the Courage Circle. There is a link in the description. It is a 20-week discipleship program. This is a program for women who are ready to build a relationship with God through the study and the application of his word. This ain't about reading it and memorizing scriptures so that we can quote scriptures and feel good about ourselves. No, it's so we can get to know the Lord so we can get a word from him. And when we get a revelation and a word from him, we are ready to apply it. What day? This day on today, the day that I get the revelation, I don't have to wait to hear if whether or not my pastor is going to speak on. No, I can open my Bible up in the midnight hour. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I want to encourage you to join me there. Um, you can use the discount code DOC25, dose of courage, right? DOC, the number two, the number five, to save 25%. Do me a favor, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not. 
hello, so that you get all of this goodness all the time. Do me another favor, hit the share button, copy the link, share it on your Facebook, share it in a group somewhere, send it to your homegirl, your mama, your auntie them. Everybody need a midweek motivation. And somebody needs, somebody in your circle needs to be reminded that the thing they've been working for, praying for, the thing that God promised them is gonna happen. All right, until next time, y'all be strong and very courageous. Again, I'm your girl. Girl, the Chief Courage Crusader, Courage Molina, your favorite Bible teacher. Love y'all. Bye.